of frustration. Full of despair. From years of hurt, disappointment, and relegation. Two British football fans have had enough. Canary Bird Elliot Holman and Wanderer Henry Hewitt are in search of glory, pride, passion, in search of silverware. And they found Major League Soccer. Welcome back to a brand new season of the MLS UK show, season six, is that right? I think so. That COVID season's thrown me. We lost that somewhere. It could be six, it could be ten. Who knows? Season six, I think, of the MLS UK show. I'm Elliot Holman. And I'm Henry Hewitt. Thank you so much for coming back and thank you to everyone who was um, asking us when we were coming back. I just thought no one would notice. If we just slipped off, didn't, mm. didn't bother... No one had no one had noticed. No one's going to miss the MLS UK show. Apparently, I was very very wrong. Yeah, a few people concerned. So thank you for the concern. <laughs> but um, I mean, we have been extremely busy. This has probably been, in terms of closed season, this is probably the quietest we've ever been. Which mm. is probably why people are asking if not when are we coming back. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we've been. Uh, I mean, I went to Paris and saw Lionel Messi play. That was nice. You've, that uh, looks so good, by the way. Oh yeah, it was uh, it was good. Luckily, I was filming because I, I don't really want to film football matches. But then I said to Poppy, who will yeah, be you were on filming today. as he scored. Yeah, Poppy will be on today's show, by the way. Uh, but yeah, so I said to her, I said uh, oh, I'm gonna because he weren't taking the corner, so I was like, oh, well, I'm gonna film it because he might score. Who knows? I mean, I don't think Messi's ever scored a, <laughs> or gonna score a header from a corner. But um, no, luckily I did. And uh, yeah, he scored. So that was great. So I've now seen Messi. I saw Ronaldo, even though we don't talk about Ronaldo, mm. earlier on in the season. So I've, uh, and Haaland actually. Uh, so I've ticked all of them off. Um, so yeah. I just presumed you'd been filming the whole game. Like one of those, you're one <laughs> no. of those people. No, I wasn't being a, a vlogger, like turning it around. If you go, oh my God, Toulouse have scored. Suey. Yeah. <laughs> Suey. Uh, no, but um, yeah, so that's my news. And uh have you got any news, Elliot, that you could bring to the show? Um, um, we tried a new, some new baked beans the other day, and they were quite nice. Yeah. Cheaper yeah. as well, so that's good. Well, you're going to have to try and save money now, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah I forgot. Um, this is happening. There you go. It's happened, everybody. As if I didn't lose enough sleep by doing a breakfast show on the radio and following MLS. Uh, I'm now going to be a dad as well. So um, there's a there's a new Orlando City fan in uh, in the making. Yeah. Uh, well, congratulations. Um, you know, if you do follow MLS UK show on Twitter and Instagram, we shared your announcement and mm. the, the story that you've had and the journey you and Brian have been on. So, yeah, it was a uh, it's, it's nice. It's nice that you're at this point, and uh, I'm sure I won't be the only person wishing you congratulations. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you. The, the, the inter- do you remember I did an interview with Chris Mueller in, yeah. in lockdown? Um, that was the time we decided we were going to try start trying for a baby. Wow. And, yeah, it's been a journey. So um, we, we eventually got there with uh, quite a lot of help from, uh, from the hospital uh, and uh, fertility doctors, etc. But, yeah, we got there, and uh, there's a... There's a, a little little Orlando fan going to be running around very soon. Um, it's just unfortunate that the first thing they'll be wearing will be uh, that purple thing over there. But hey, who am I to judge? It's all right, babies poo a lot. It's going to get <laughs> ruined. <laughs> Which will be a metaphor for some of Orlando's performances this season. Should have got sure. an Atlanta one, shouldn't I? <laughs> um, now, this, of course, is going to be a special season because not only by uh, July am I going to be up uh, all hours watching uh, MLS, it's going to be a lot easier to watch MLS as well, yeah. which is so exciting. Yeah, well, Apple TV, uh, you've signed up. Mm. I've signed up, accidentally signed up twice. So uh, <laughs> how? Uh, well, I uh, I've got my I've, I've basically I've got one Apple account on my laptop and one Apple account on my TV. So I'm going on my TV, going, why isn't this working? Signed up again. So uh, someone's getting too much money. No, it means is this that podcast I, paying you more? I'm going to have to have cheap beans be- 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 from now on. <laughs> Did you pay for the whole season? Yeah. I am, I am in contact. Someone's making no, the paper. Trying, trying I went monthly. <laughs> I got a baby on the way. Oh, well, uh, yeah, I am uh, trying to sort that out with Apple. But um, yeah, but exciting news, which we couldn't tell anyone at the time. No. But just before the launch of Apple TV, uh, MLS UK, well, MLS 
season pass, we got invited to be on a Zoom call with a load of other sort of like journalists and stuff to talk through uh, Apple TV. And we were so excited about it and then got told, well, you can't tell anyone. And we were like, no, <laughs> this is the exciting thing. This is the yeah. one exciting thing from our uh, close season, MLS related, of course. Uh, but yeah, we were on it and it got explained and uh, it looks, I mean, have you w- watched much from it so far? Yeah, the first thing I'd like, oh, we've all done the same. We've all gone into our own clubs first, haven't we? Um, the first thing I watched and it re- this is the moment where I was like, this is this is better than I thought. And I messaged you, you'll remember. I was, uh, it was a Wednesday afternoon uh, and I'd been at work and I was just like, oh, get in bed nice and early and I'll, I'll put season pass on. Went on Orlando's page and there's a, um, there's a thing about the the penalty shootout in the playoffs between Orlando and New York City. You know, the playoff, uh, the penalty yes. shootout that just yeah. went on forever. Um, and I was like, oh, it's going to be highlights of that game and, and how it all went wrong. Oh no, 30 minute documentary. We've got the, the referee, Alan Chapman's in tears. Wow. Apologising for messing. I was like, wow, they've gone in on the content. Um, and there's that, but for every club, there's so much stuff. So um, we we don't get absolutely any money at all for telling you to go and subscribe, but you should subscribe because especially if you're in the UK, you know, if, if you're one of us trying to watch MLS across the pond at 4 a.m. in the morning, trying to watch mm. Portland, Seattle, trying to get a stream, it's so, this is just it is going to change everything. And I think it's going to propel MLS to new levels as well. Yeah, I'd agree. And I think, um, you know, I think there's other leagues. I can see the Premier League doing something similar at some point. We'd all pay for it. Yeah, we would. And, uh, you know, you look at this sort of Apple TV model, Netflix model of this, uh, you know, of like football, it's the future. So it's going to be brilliant. And to watch, be able to watch every single game, the amount of times where... We've been stuck to watching whatever has been on UK TV, which normally has been into Miami because of the <laughs> David Beckham link. Or, you know, when Zlatan was there, it might have been LA Galaxy. Now we can literally look like this weekend. I'm so excited to, uh, of course, we'll watch the Nashville New York game. And then we'll be texting each other and going, well, what game are you watching? Well, I'm now watching Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. Oh, are you watching Philadelphia? I'm watching, uh, oh, turn over to this game. It's brilliant. And mm. we can then... And I'll that. say, well, no, I'll see it because on probably Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday afternoon, I'm going to get home from work and just watch the games because <laughs> yeah, yeah. you can just watch all of them, watch them back. So um, in my mind, instead of ever sleeping, I'm just going to watch so much MLS. I can't wait. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, those uh, early morning feeds that you're gonna have to uh, oh, just watching. Yeah, watching MLS. So. I'll be watching a lot more Western Conference than I ever have before. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, hey, look, new season and uh, a new partnership. And uh, I need to tell you about something um, that I've been working on that I want to bring to the podcast, if that's okay, as a little as a little partnership. Hey, go for it. Uh, this is something I've been working on for uh, since my honeymoon. You know, when you're on holiday and you've got. Um, too much time on your hands and you start thinking, oh, I could, could maybe do this and do that. And then you cause yourself so much work when you get back. Um, let me introduce you to Green Man Tips. Okay, um, we know you come to this podcast, the MLS UK Show podcast, for all of your in-depth, very serious stats and analysis about Major League Soccer. Right, guys? Right? No. No, it's the silly games, isn't it? Um, However, Green Man are here to help with your MLS betting throughout the 2023 season and beyond. So, Green Man will help you turn a profit on the hardest league to predict in the world, MLS, by helping you back the right teams at the right time using a unique point scoring system, which is made up from hundreds of factors. We talk about them all the time. It's the travel, you know, east to west. West to east is a different jet lag. It affects your body differently. All of this taken into account, home records, roster strength, game day strength of the actual 11, everything. We're across it all, okay? The only thing Green Man doesn't know is what Kai Wagner had for breakfast, because... The man is a man of mystery. Um, So you can get tips delivered to your phone before each game day via the Telegram app. Uh, So whether you want to back a single team or a player to score in a game, maybe you want to do a whole accumulator and just eye up how much cashola you can get. Uh, Green Man's got you covered. Okay, now um, we're looking after you, of course. So MLS UK show listeners right now can get their first week free. So you can join us for the first week of the season completely free search join green man tips on telegram and uh, we'll look after you we'll get you into the channel um or you can check out the link on our socials as well just check out green man tips and of course please gamble responsibly 
How exciting. Uh, right, MLS UK show. We are back for a brand new season, but that doesn't mean that we'll be taking all the old stuff that you love and doing new stuff. No, of course, you know as well enough now that we just rehash all the same rubbish that we have done before. So, as we do for the first episode of every series, we're going to be doing our preview episode uh, for the West and the East. And as part of that, of course, I've roped in this true star of the show, my wife, Poppy, to do a kit reviews. She's back. Uh, so we will be hearing what she thinks of all the new jerseys uh, that's at some point during the show. Uh, but first, it is the MLS UK show. And every MLS UK show starts off with the game with a changing name. Yes. Now, of course, uh, we were extremely saddened to hear of the passing of Anton Walks, uh, who tragically passed away in the close season. Uh, so this is the first chance we've had to, to offer our, our thoughts and condolences to his family and his friends and everybody uh, connected with the football club as well over on the over in America. And Anton was a player that featured in the game with a changing name. Um, f- few years ago now, a few seasons back, uh, having played for Portsmouth yeah. over here, and of course then uh, with with Atlanta United, and so I thought as as a tribute from here on out, it should be the Anton Walks game with a changing name. So this game for those who are new to the podcast is uh, a, t- a player who has played in both the UK and the US. Yep. So. Who is? Well, actually, you don't tell me who it is. <laughs> I'll read you their career path. You have to work out who it is. Uh, okay, so um, the first ever Anton Walks game with the changing name. This player started their career in Norway. Ooh. And I'm going to be honest, they played for four teams in Norway that I'm not even going to try and pronounce. We haven't heard of them. That doesn't mean anything to this game. It's not going to help you out. Okay, I promise. Uh, they then moved to uh, Belarus, the oh. capital of Belarus which is Minsk. Minsk, okay. Uh, before going back to Norway, where uh, they played for Starbeck, which we've actually heard of. Uh, and then Hull City. Right. Any ideas early on? No. No? Hull City and then LAFC until 2020. Right. Does that ring any bells at all? Because when I think Hull City, I'm thinking Altidore. I'm pretty sure Altidore was at Hull. Yeah, but I don't think he started in Norway. Uh, they then went to play in China. And then they played in Qatar. And now they are back in MLS. Wow. Okay. It's been a journey for this player. It has been a journey. As uh, regular listeners and viewers will know that the first episode of every series, I do tend to struggle. And I think it's going to be the same this time. I don't have a clue. Off the top of my head, in 40, 50 minutes time, it may be different. But for now... I think you'll kick yourself. Yeah, probably will. Um, it's maybe a test of uh, your uh, off-season knowledge on moves. Who's moved back to the league? Who's arrived back at Toronto? Oh... I might know, actually. Yeah? Is he a striker? Mm-hmm. Okay, I might know, actually. Uh, if you know, let us know. At MLS UK Show. Twitter, Instagram. Uh, you can follow us on TikTok as well now. Uh, we're on there. Uh, or you can uh, email us the old-fashioned way. Is uh, hello at MLS.show. You know how TikTok knows? It just It's freaky, isn't it? How it knows what you like, what you're into. Mm-hmm. Bit embarrassing, really. Um, obviously, uh, my TikTok is a lot of um, football, soccer, and specifically, at, like, follow some of the MLS clubs on yeah. there. So I was scrolling through um, a couple of weeks ago, and then my own face just came up, and it was our account, which I didn't follow at the time. Wow. Really freaked me out. I was like, that's me! And then I realized it was the MLS UK show account. Yeah, I should really start telling you what I do <laughs> these little things. I wondered what you got up to. <laughs> right, so coming up, we're going to be talking about the East, but first, it's all about the West. Elliot Holman, Henry Hewitt. MLS UK show. So let's have a look at the West then, and uh, in particular LAFC. Let's start off with them. Elliot, it's been quite a while since the team's gone back to back. I think 2011, 2012, which was LA Galaxy. Mm. Can LAFC win MLS Cup again? I think they've got something like nine of nine of their like big, you know, starting players have uh, have stuck around, mm. which is crucial when you're LAFC and you're winning the league. For years, we've we've sort of. Um, been so impressed with their roster and how they how they handle it. I don't think their roster is as stacked depth wise as it was when we looked at 
maybe their first couple of years, you know, you used to think, how have they got him? And yeah. how have they got him? And they've got him and they're not even bringing him on. And he'd be a starter for every other team. Um, I don't think it's like that. But I think, uh, apart from losing Arango, maybe, I, I, I think they're pretty much at the same at the same strength. And that, mm. so ultimately that does mean they're going to be a team to watch out for this season. Yeah, I think credit to LAFC for how well they did last year mm. is the fact that you've not even mentioned Gareth Bale there in well, retiring. Yeah, I mean, it? Gareth Bale joined halfway through the season um, after playing a bit of golf and played a bit of football, won MLS Cup, went to the World Cup and then going to go and play some more golf. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, I think um, I do. I think Arango is going to be a, a big miss for them. Of course, he's gone to play in Mexico. Um so uh, yeah, but you know, I think when you look at the players they've signed, they've, they've signed Aaron Long, of course, who has that MLS experience. Uh, Abamyang's been linked as well, mm. so maybe if he joins for the, uh, you know, because he's not really playing for Chelsea, is he? So yeah, I suppose he could maybe join now. I don't know where the rules with the the loan signings. Maybe it's a summer move, but you know, I think if he signs, questions about his uh, temperament and te- questions about how he is around the club, but. You know, there's no doubt in his quality, uh, and Kalini as well. You know, he's he's. I think for if you look at LAFC and how hard it's going to be this year, because you've got to remember they've got the Champions League, but they've also got the Leagues Cup and the Campeones Cup and the US Open. So it's going to be tough. They've, there's a lot mm. of games there, but Kalini has got that experience of winning stuff back to back. He's yeah. got that winner's experience, so he can help them. You know, I know that uh, they were talking to. Uh, you know, people in the the front office of um, you know of LAFC, and they're like, we want players who can win multiple games a week, mm. and that is exactly what we need to yeah. do this year. So it is going to be tough, but I think for LAFC, you know, maybe, and this could be the, a case for a few teams. I'm thinking Austin as well. Is that rather than having a, a, a complete season like we did last year with the Champions League, and then the, the, they're off for a month for the League's Cup. I think it could be uh, LAFC might not win Supporter Shield, but they could go and win MLS Cup with the experience at the back end of the, the yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. Um, one thing to talk about as well is Latif Blessing, who has gone to New England Revolution. I like mm. I like that move for New England Revolution, by the way. Um, who you know who need to improve on last year, um, but you know that's that is a little weakening for for LAFC. But their this is what we mean. Their roster means they can lose a Latif Blessing. If you take a Latif Blessing out of uh, Atlanta last year, San Jose last year, Miami last year, Columbus, they immediately become a, a, a lot weaker. Yeah. Um, whereas, big addition for New England Revolution, but LAFC will, will, will cope. Uh, Dennis Buanga, he's, uh, he did okay last year, mm. but he's going to be expected to replace um, Arango. Do you think he can do it? Is that the missing piece? It's hard, isn't it? Um, we're used to really big name signings uh, at at LAFC and LA Galaxy to be fair Um, some clubs just do it differently so it's a different you know different bit of business but it takes everything to build a roster you know you've you've got somebody who can go and score goals and that's ultimately (laughs) that's 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 all you need to be scouting isn't it somebody can go and put the ball in the back of the net Um, I I like Aaron Long joining I think that's massive that's that's someone who's a, a former defender of the year from 20 2018 2019 mm. um you know loads of mls experience at red bulls really really strengthens the uh, the defense for, for lafc so they're strengthening all over the pitch it's not what you want to hear is it i do feel that lafc can start to create a dynasty they are probably if you look at all the teams in mls they are the ones that could create that yeah but you've got to say that it must be a lot harder now than it was if you think of previous dynasties in mls it must be a lot harder now to do that um, you know, and even the likes of Seattle not making playoffs last year, they've took a bit of a step back. So, yeah, it's a big season for LAFC. They've got the first MLS Cup now, and then I think it's it's that back to back thing. As I said, no team has done it in such a long time. If they can do it, that'd be a big marker for how they will do the next few years at BMO Stadium, as yes. it's now called. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? Um, or BMO, as I heard it referred to on uh, Apple TV, and I was like, come on, guys. Dear. <laughs> um, Bradley Wright Phillips, who of course spent uh, a season with with LAFC, has them to finish top in the West. Well, uh, and who could we can't? You know, he's a fellow Brit. Who are we to? I'm not uh, going to argue with him. Let's go across to LA Galaxy then, because um, you know they made playoffs last year. It was mm. a lot better season than what we've seen in the, the previous few seasons from them. 
Um, can they go that one step further? Can they, first of all, challenge the top of the West, but then challenge MLS Cup? Uh, LA, LA Galaxy gets every year, don't they? I just... It's so ingrained in us Brits uh, because it, just 10, 15 years ago, it was the only team we could ever tell you about. Hmm. Uh, and that's 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 a fact. And that's what it was like over here. Um, that's what coverage was like. David Beckham played for him. That's all we knew. Um, so you kind of just want them to get back to those days. Uh, I don't think I don't think they've got the roster of, of LAFC. But sometimes, you know, hard work beats talent. So l- let's see. Kevin Cabral was frustrating to watch. And he's left the galaxy. Um, and they've also lost Araujo, which is a whole different story, of course. He's gone to Barcelona. Just. That was just happened, yeah, yeah. finally, after they missed the deadline with the paperwork uh, on deadline day. So, um, th- you know, that, that's a big loss. Araujo is a big loss at right back. I don't think he can even play for Barcelona. So it seems a complete waste him going now uh, until they can register him in the, in the summer. But um, I think bringing in, uh, bringing in Mavinga, I've written Mavinga and I've written uh, Rodriguez as well. Mm. As Mavinga, you know, he's getting on, aren't we all? But it, it, it's talent. It's, it's it's talent and it's experience. MLS experience. Ding, there it is. There's the first one. Um, it, we'll be hearing that a lot probably <laughs> today and the ne- as we go through the first couple of episodes as we're talking about teams that have made moves. MLS experience is big. Of course, we know him from Toronto FC. Um, Mimi Rodriguez as well was at uh, Houston Dynamo. Yeah. Uh, midfielder. Uh, he's 27 years old. He's made 136 appearances for Houston. MLS experience. I like it. I like what they're doing. Someone like Cabral should have worked on paper, but I think they're now, those players are a lot more guaranteed to be reliable. Yeah, I think uh, I've got on my notes here, I've got hard working. And I think that's what, especially for uh, Rodriguez, I think that's what LA Galaxy need for so long. We've had, they've had the talent, mm. but they've not had the players who are hard working, who will put the graft in. You know, when you need a win on the last game, they will put that in and get yeah. you over the line. So uh, I think they, I think they could be two really good signings. Of course, Greg Vanny knows uh, Mavinga very well, um, so we'll see with that one. I think what I'm really looking forward to with LA Galaxy is seeing how Chicharito and Ricky Puj link up together. They showed Absolutely. glimpses at the end of last season. I think that Nashville um, playoff game as well, where they can really be a threat this year. And I think Chicharito played better with him. You know, I think there was less pressure on him. You could sense at some parts of the season he was feeling that pressure, that first season especially. Uh, but I think with having a Ricky Puj there, someone who can create stuff, that will really help Chicharito. So I I personally, I don't know. I, I don't think they will win MLS Cup. But, you know, if you, if you said, would LA Galaxy finish fourth in the West again or even third or second, I, I could see that happening. Okay, um, there's a, there's a slight problem we've got ahead of this season. Go on, and that's that. There's a new team, and it used to be Austin, Austin FC, and it was Nashville, Nashville SC, and uh, you know, LAFC, Atlanta United, Orlando City, New York City. I can't say I can't. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just cannot say it right. I cannot get it right. You say Saint Louis, don't you? It's St. Louis. It's, I know it's St. Louis, but I can't tell them. I can't. Do you know get why that brain. is? I've got a theory on this. Is because there's Louisville. Yeah. Uh, well, th- do you know what? I thought you were going to expose me to go and go down the One Direction route. So thank you for saving oh. me. Um, there is also Louis Thomas. Yeah. But, uh, I, I totally. I get. I get that. I get that. And uh, you know, I know us in the UK. Uh, some, you know, some of our US. Viewers and listeners will completely understand, uh, for example, the spelling of Leicester. There's Leicester. No, like, there shouldn't be an I in Leicester. Uh, there shouldn't be a C in Leicester, but there is. Uh, but yeah, this one, St. Louis, uh, St. Louis, <laughs> Louisville. See? Uh, I've, I've got it in there. I've got it fine. But you've, uh, yeah, you, it may take a few episodes. So bear with us. And the capitals. Have you noticed the capitals in City? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, isn't so it a T? It's St. Louis. City. SC. Like what? Are, what we're meant to do with the capitals? Shout! What, what's that all about? <laughs> um, I tell you what, they will be shouting about at St. Louis. Is apparently the stadium food is going to be like one of the best in the world. Let's go. Let's do yeah. it. Uh, it's a uh, city park. between us. We've never, me and Henry, have never been to an MLS game together. Uh, yet for some reason, our first one is now St. Louis <laughs> City. <laughs> SC. Uh, the food's already been praised. I'm looking forward to. I, I do follow Footy Scran on Twitter. I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, quite a few photos from St. Uh, St. Louis games at uh, City Park. But on the pitch then, I mean... It's City! 
Park. <laughs> but I do think this is it's a difficult one for us with St. Louis because, like, um, you know, sometimes we're is new... because you haven't heard of any of the players? <laughs> yeah. But with new franchises, we maybe know one or two of the players. Mm. I mean, we had to have uh, Chris Smith, friend of the show, on uh, last year to talk about Charlotte. We were like, well, Christian Fuchs is quite good. Yeah, that's a good point. But we didn't know much about uh, St. Louis. I mean, we know the DPs, Klaus and uh, Lewin. So uh, I'm excited, though. I'm excited to see how we do. This is the... The, this is the thing about new franchises is that it's okay teams coming in and going, oh yeah, well they've got this player and that player, we know that. I don't know much about St. Louis and I'm so excited. I can't wait to watch the, the first home game, mm. uh, not this weekend, the weekend after, where they've already sold out. And it just, uh, this is, I think we need to take in this moment, these these seasons where we're getting new franchises, yeah, yeah, yeah. because there's going to be a point where it'll stop and then there'll be a point where we we'll go, Oh, we want, we miss these new. Not while the dark garbage box are rolling in. It's <laughs> never going to stop. Um, yeah, St. Louis, St. Louis City. Uh, welcome to MLS. Their team's quite weak on paper. There's not a lot of experience there. Um, there's a lot of players that are very unproven, but it could just work. It's unlikely, though. Yeah, well, we'll see. Because uh, if you look back at the previous uh, new franchises, see how St. Louis have got to compare. I guess Charlotte did okay. We didn't make the mm-hmm. playoffs, but the, the challenge right to the end. Yeah. Uh, Austin had a poor first season, but then really came good at last year. So, um, you know, there, there is, it's going to be... It's going to be a challenge. I think the main challenge this year is just to stay competitive. I think when a team comes in and be not competitive at all, no, that's that's where I mean, and credit to Austin that they kept the fan base, you know. But for St. Louis, sold out the first game. I would hate to see them have a season full of defeats and then at the end of the season they're getting half empty stadiums yeah, because yeah. that that would be a shame. But uh, come on, St. Louis, do us all proud, and uh, I'm looking forward to learning more. Um, you know about them this season. I know Taylor Twelman uh, knows a lot about St. Louis. He's really mm. uh, hyping them, so I'm looking forward on Apple TV to seeing him at some of their matches. Any other picks from the West that you want to bring to the table? Yeah, well, let's let's have a look then at some teams that could make waves this year. Let's talk about Austin actually, because I think it's a massive season for Austin. They uh, last year did very well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they they eventually got knocked out of the playoffs to. Uh, LAFC, which you know they won it, so there's no no shame in that. Um, but I think this season they they need to carry carry on. You know, do we? What's the next step for them? Is it just to to be competitive again and have that second season where they're doing well in MLS? Is it to maybe win the US Open? Is it to be competitive in the League's Cup? What would you say? I I think at the minute what seems to be really common is that everyone just wants to win something. Something, winning something keeps you in a job and it keeps your fans, fan base happy. We saw it with Pereja last year. Just, you know, they got they got the Open Cup. They won silverware. Seattle, very, very, you know, the first, first MLS team to go and win the, the, the CONCACAF Champions League. Doesn't matter that they did nothing in the league. <laughs> they absolutely achieved nothing else. Um, you know, couldn't progress in the club's World Cup. Doesn't matter. Got that. I think it's just ticking any silverware box at this point because there's not there's not enough history of MLS to for one thing to matter more than another. I think you just try and get your hands on some silverware. So uh, let's have a look at some of the signings then. Of course, they've brought in that MLS experience. They've brought in Jesse Zardes and Will Bruin. Um, I'm glad Will Bruin signed for them, a team playing in green, because it'd be really weird seeing him not <laughs> yeah. in a Seattle shirt. Um, they'll be going up front with Dryusi. Um, are you? Is that a sign of where they should have gone, bringing in that MLS experience? Yeah, I think so, um, because I think w- when we first saw Austin, we didn't really know what to make of them, and obviously they had a rough first season. I think just just stabilising the boat a little bit is is really important. Um, I think it's still one of the stronger teams in the West. I, I, I really believe that. I think it could certainly go one of two ways. Um, but, you know, I, I believe in uh, the, the Los Verdes, as it says on the back of your laptop. Hmm. Yes, um, they've got Champions League as well this year. So this uh, is the only concern yeah. is the squad depth, and I think we've seen it with some of the more established MLS teams, let alone uh, teams that are just finding their feet, just you know trying to get their roster balanced because it takes years to sort your roster out. It does, you know, you make one mistake in year one, and you're you're paying for it. Even if you move the player on, you have to still keep paying for it. So I, I do, I am concerned maybe for for them having to take on those extra games, but it's the same for everybody. Can Seattle come back? I hope so. Doesn't yeah. didn't seem right last year. Didn't mm. seem right. A New England Revolution had an off year. Portland had a bit of an off year. Um, Seattle were massively off it, but 
they went and won the Champions League. Who cares? You know, who cares about MLS if you're going to bring uh, bring home the Champions League? So, yeah, I hope they're back at it this year. I really do. You know, I think it's a big year for... Go on. Sporting KC. It's a huge year for Sporting KC. Because that was disappointing last year. Yeah, the, the the one thing for Sporting KC that I look at and think you could have a good season is because they ended the season really mm. well. And it actually, you could argue if they had an extra month or two, maybe they could have troubled the playoffs yeah, yeah. in the end. Um, but uh, yeah, they'll be looking to to come back from it. Polito should be back this year. Yeah, so that's good massive for miss for him, wasn't wasn't he last year? Mm. Um, yeah, no, I, I think I think they maybe des- I think they deserve it. I think they've got a much better squad than they much better roster than than we saw at the beginning of last year. I think what's interesting is because they had that good start to the uh, sorry the good end to the season. Mm. I think uh, you know the the front office and Peter Vermees has gone. Maybe our squad isn't as bad as what we yeah, thought. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of sa- saved them from having to do a lot of business. Yeah. Uh, Willie Agada, he, he was really good at the end. So uh, a full season with him mm. could be interesting. Don't I wouldn't count Sporting KC out, you know. And imagine if Chicago Fire would have played John Duran for the whole season. Yeah, exactly. They started, they started playing him after I got married. It was, I was on my honeymoon and he, got, he made his debut in August. You're like, what's going on there? What are you doing? <laughs> Uh, right, well, they're the teams that we're looking forward to seeing in the West. We're looking forward to seeing all teams, of course, but they're the teams where we're really thinking they could uh, make waves in it. They could uh, trouble the top end of the league. Who do you think will be top of the West? Let us know at MLS UK Show, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Put it in the comments on YouTube or you can email us, hello at MLS.show. Uh, right, so after the preview of the West, it's now time to preview the kits. And uh, new listeners to the show will not know, but everyone else knows that she is the real star of the show. My wife, Poppy. Every season so far, she has done her kit reviews. Um, She does tend to contradict herself a lot, I've got to say. But uh, we know that she doesn't like a red kit and she does question why teams in green play in green because it's the colour of the pitch. Um, if you don't know Poppy, she is a makeup artist here in uh, the UK on a TV show. So originally we thought, well, who better to look at the kit? Someone mm. who isn't looking necessarily at a, a heritage point of view. They're not looking and thinking, um, oh, well, that's th- th- they play in that colour, so they are going to play in that colour. She will go, well, scrap it. That doesn't go well with uh, the, the other shades of uh, colours on that shirt. You need to start again. Um, now, but I think after all these years, and after the many tweets we get asking Poppy, you know, Poppy's opinions on kits, I think she is trying to believe a hype a bit too much. I got her to test the mic out, and uh, and this is what she said. I'm back. The woman, the myth. I can't remember what the third thing is. The legend. Poppy, kit reviews. Oh yeah. dear. Yeah. Um, it's because that one time she got stopped in the street. Now he's gone straight to her head. I know. Somebody went up to her and said, Poppy, what do you think of my shirt? Um, no, she she does get a lot of uh, tweets, though. She gets a lot of tweets. Hey, Poppy. Hey, Poppy. Um, if you go to our TikTok, actually, uh, at MLS UK show, you can watch when she reviewed the World Cup kits at the end of last year. <laughs> Um, right, well, let's get started then. So the first one. So I love this. I the... love it so much. I'm so excited. It's my favorite part of the year. And it is for a lot of people. So let's uh, let's go the first one. So let's do Austin. Of course, Austin, it's their home shirt. It's the uh, green and black stripes. And this is what she thought of this one. I love it. Even though they're in green and we all know they've come dressed as a pitch. They've even got the lines of the lawnmower in them. And I love that they're all random and don't add up. So there you go. Uh, what do you make of that Austin kit? I didn't expect Head in Hands to come so soon. <laughs> um... I love the Austin kit. I think it's great. Because like, you know me, I don't like stripes because mm. you can't do a lot with them. But because they haven't got a huge amount of history yet, they can mess around with them. Love yeah, it. That's a good point. Uh, right, next in the West is Colorado. A lot of people have been praising this kit. It's a bit out there. I'm guessing because Colorado is cold, it looks like they've got ice cubes on it. Right, because the altitude, sure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, by the way, if you are listening to this, if you watch the video on YouTube, the the episode, you will be able to see the kit. So you should have pointed that out. But um, I will try my best to describe them. So yeah, I mean, Poppy's she's she's done well, quite well here. It is a, a different shades of blue, uh, and in the middle, it is kind of a square sort of pattern. So I can see where she's got the uh, the ice cube for this one. Shambles. 
So next is Dallas, and now this one. This is taking heritage uh, from the Dallas Burn days. Uh, if you know the Dallas Burn logo, the old one, it is the... Uh, the fire-breathing... Uh... Horse? Stallion? Maybe. Uh, well, they've got the fire bit from that in the middle of the shirt printed. Um, Poppy didn't necessarily see that that was fire. Here's what she thought. Dallas, what were you thinking? That looks like when you cut a potato up, in primary school and you make prints on a sheet of paper with it oh what when you dip it in paint yeah and put it on yeah that's what she saw on that right uh right next in the west of course we're going to houston uh your bog standard houston kit really orange i'm a little bit disappointed with this i really like the orange and i really like that there's lighter bits of orange and stuff but to me this just looks like a goalie kit I agree. It's it's just a Houston kit, and it could have been the Houston kit from five years ago, two years ago, 15 years ago. It's just orange. Next, we're going to go to SKC. You know what you're getting with SKC's home shirt. Light blue. Dark stripes. blue. Yeah. Here we go. This is everything that's telling me I shouldn't like this, but I really do. I really like that color blue as well. I think it's just an interesting shirt, and I like the amount of stripes that they've got really like that and i like the two little stars i think skc get away with stripes a bit more for some reason i don't know it yeah. seems less if you said to me oh what are skc kits like i'm not as hell bent on stripes as i am say with atlanta or austin i think it's because the different shades of blue mm. it's quite similar it yeah. matches quite well uh right la galaxy a lot of people have been loving this one now remember a lot of people loved their last away kit which was the uh the re- sort of retro feel to yeah. it uh, and Poppy hated it. Um, so a lot of people loving this one. It's, it's got a green with the colours like the uh, red and yellow and green mixed on it. It's, uh, it's pretty good, actually. I like it. But will Poppy agree? The actual shirt is awful. The only thing saving it is the collar and the neck, which I absolutely adore. Well, there you go. Uh, the, yeah, the collar and the neck's all right. That's all that matters. Yeah. Uh, right, let's move over to LAFC then. So their kit this year has been called the Smokescreen Kit. Mm, not my favourite. Mm, it's, it's a bit of a weird colour. Camo, what, isn't it? Yeah. I think they've gone for the Crease Shirt of the Year Award. I love the colour. It's so interesting. I don't think we've ever seen a kit that's this colour. Well, since I've been doing kit reviews. I really like it. It, it looks like smoke. But it does look like it's lived in your gym bag for a year. <laughs> will I ever agree with Poppy? Ever? No, I don't she think She says she will. likes the colour, really? Um, right, Minnesota now. This one. Love it. Yes. This one. It's, uh, well, it's the standard Minnesota sort of light blue at the top. It's white at the bottom. Similar to that Orlando shirt, yeah, actually, yeah. where it's different shades. Uh, and then in the middle, um, well, it's a mixture of uh, fuchsia pink and black. Goes well with the blue. Surely Poppy's going to love this one. This is my favourite one. Here we go. This is amazing. It looks like a a skyline. I'm guessing that that's what it is. I love the colour choices. I actually really love that the bottom is just plain white. I think that's fab. And I love the tones of the pink and the blue together. I love that. Great, great shirt. Well, I said, will I ever agree? And there we go. We finally agreed on one. Um, Right. So next in the West, it's Portland. Now, Portland, I've gone for a real... It's kind of a the sort of well, how to describe it? Kind of Burberry kind of, mm. you know, print on it. I mean, she's into a fashion. She likes her prints. Oh, she like this one. It's quite Scottish, isn't it? Looks like the designers had a trip to Scotland. Oh. If your nan made football shirts, there you go. <laughs> if your nan made football shirts, <laughs> love it. Uh, right, RSL. A lot of people have been loving this one. They've gone back to sort of gold theme. Um, I, don't, I don't think we've have we had a gold shirt before on MLS UK show. Poppy kit reviews. Has she rated a gold shirt? This could be a new one. That color yellow is just like when you put your yellows in with the wrong wash, or you know, like you leave a white shirt in the attic for twenty years. It just looks dirty, and nobody's gonna want that. Well, some people do. Prefers a more canary yellow. Hmm, I don't go that far. Uh, right, San Jose. This is uh, your bog standard San Jose shirt, but there are some interesting patterns on it. It's blue, it's black, but will Poppy love it? I love that. It's like geometric mountains. Geometric mountains. Yeah, she did ask her afterwards as well, where is San Jose? So I told her, and she said, is there mountains there? I said, well, there probably is. There's mountains all over the States. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. Now, the next one is a big shirt. This one is 
Uh, was there a lot of people talking? It's Seattle's away shirt. Yeah. It's Bruce Lee inspired. Do you think Poppy will like this one? I can never work her out. I don't think I can, and I'm a husband. <laughs> Um, for those who haven't seen it and are listening, this one, it's uh, sort of a mixture of reds and blacks. It's kind of got a dragon print on it. I as don't well. I don't like it personally, which means Poppy will love it. Well, let's see. To me, this looks like it's been inspired by Chinese New Year with the dragon. I, I really like the scales and like ridges that it's got on the shirt and the yellow little highlights almost looks like fire. I think that's really interesting. I personally don't love the shirt but i love what it looks like i don't know if that makes sense but i just i think it's a really interesting shirt i understood what she meant there and i agree i think my head hurts (laughs) i wouldn't wear it myself but it is a real it's not a bad shirt i just wouldn't wear it myself okay right next is st louis now this is a brand new team Mm. of course new colors uh, so she does the home shirt and the away shirt. So the home shirt, for those who can't see, it's kind of a, a, a sort of a purpley pink kind of colour. Um, and then the away shirt is a white one. So what will Poppy think of this? Kind of like the stripes. They've gone a bit zebra. Should have done it all over the shirt. And the away shirt, well, it's nothing new, is it? This is a brand new team. They could have gone in any direction. And instead, they've looked at your old Bolton shirt from years ago. There you go. St. Louis clearly took inspiration from Bolton Wanderers. That's why I had them to struggle this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Last but not least in the West is Vancouver Whitecaps. You know what you're getting with Vancouver. It's white with a blue strap across the middle. I like how thin the stripes are. I don't think we've really seen much of a stripe that thin before. What's kind of bothering me is around where the stripe around the middle is, there's a stripe either side of it. And I feel like it's too close. I don't know. Maybe they should have just not done a stripe there because they've got the stripe around the middle. I don't love it, but it's better than a plain white shirt. The red creeping in to Vancouver, which is bizarre. I, I get Canada maybe, but mm. I don't know where the red's coming from. I don't mind it. I, I think it's your standard Vancouver shirt. And uh, they, I think Vancouver each year, they don't do amazing shirts, but they don't do bad ones. I think Vancouver mm. tends to play it safe. Um, right. So uh, of the ones we've seen in the West, do you have a, a favourite before we, we hear what Poppy's was? Um I I think it's got to be Minnesota. I would agree with that one. There's a few shirts, and there's one in the East, which I'll tell you about later, that I saw and thought straight away, that's a nice shirt. You know, the initial, when you see it and go, mm. oof, that's nice. Mm. Uh, I think Orlando, Minnesota. I'd imagine. Uh, well, uh, we'll have to find out. Uh, yeah, Minnesota's. Um, other than that, you know, I, I quite like LA Galaxies. Uh, I know Poppy didn't, but I quite like it. Uh, so, yeah, they, those would be my two favourites from the West. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I There's more that I don't like in the West. Mm. I think it's a strong year for shirts, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'd have to say St. Louis City I'm not on board with. Well, let's hear what Poppy thought was her favourite. So for my Western Conference favourite, I'm going to have to have a top three. I'm going to say Minnesota is my number one. I just really like the colour combination. I think the skyline thing, is, if that's what it is, is really clever. But surprisingly my joint second is austin and lafc i'll agree on the austin i think austin and minnesota for me hmm. uh yeah minnesota and as i said i think uh, uh but saying that I, I don't mind the seattle one i wouldn't wear it but i think it's a it's seattle have been doing well on the kits so i'm just i'm just getting word from uh the producer that no one cares what we think no oh, yeah it's uh, just poppy's kit reviews in which case now it's time to preview the East. MLS UK Show with Elliot Holman and Henry Hewitt. So it's time to have a look at the Eastern Conference ahead of the MLS 2023 season. Um, Now, in the East, of course, regular listeners and viewers will know that our teams play in this conference. Uh, So let's get it out of the way first. I'll talk about Atlanta in a minute. But Elliot, Orlando, is this going to be the year that you finally challenge for anything in the league? You know, you've just been hurt so many times. You just yeah. grow wise to it, don't you? The first few years of this podcast, Orlando had a torrid time. And uh, then slowly, you know, the roster's got better expectations grown, won the uh, US Open Cup last year. And this is the first time where I'm thinking, 
we've got a really good chance. Mm. Really good chance. Um, if, and it's a massive if for me personally, if Pareja can get what what he should be getting out of these players. Because I think the roster was was way better than 13th or wherever we finished last year. I think it was way better. That's mm. miles off it. And I think the Open Cup has saved his job, if I'm honest. Wow, even though you made playoffs. We scraped playoffs. Half the league makes the playoffs. Yeah, that's true. The roster, even you can admit, the roster was the roster was better than Atlanta's. You know that. I know that. Yet they only just finished <laughs> only just finished above the, you know, above them. Yeah, no, as a I think Orlando are in a, a, a sort of a weird situation, position at the moment. Because if you compare this Orlando team to the ones, say, yeah. Of recent years, you've always had a Kakara, you've always had a Nanny in there. You don't have that truly star name at the moment, but you would then argue that they're probably playing or performing better than they have done in those recent years. Yeah, yeah. So in that case, you would say Orlando should challenge for playoffs again. For me, I think seventh, I would see Orlando finishing better than seventh, but I don't think it would be much more than fourth, maybe fifth. So uh, yeah, that's that's my concern. I think the roster is up there, mm. and I think what we'll actually get from it, unfortunately, will be more fourth, fifth, sixth. And of course, you've got the Champions League now. This season's going to be an odd season because it'll break with the League's Cup. It's going to break it up. It is literally two mm. part season. That first part, if Orlando do anything in the Champions League, will be difficult. Now, if you find yourself so far off the pace. It might be tough to come back. Bearing that in mind, is Orlando, are you going to be a cup team? Are you looking at the League's, leagues Cup? Are you looking at the Champions League this year and the US Open again? Or do you think you can actually sustain that challenge? I'm a traditionalist. I want to see I, I want to see us do well in MLS because MLS is my favourite league in the world. Orlando my favourite team in the world. I, I, want, I want Orlando to go and do the business, get MLS Cup. Uh, but of course I would accept any, you know, any success on any, on any front. The one thing I will say on the Champions League thing, yes, we've never done it before. Yes, there's going to be congested fixtures for me. And uh, even stepping away, I won't take my Orlando shirt off. No one wants to see that. But if I was to, I still think, and I hope you agree, I still think Orlando has now with the off season business they've done. It's been the best, one of the best off seasons out of any team in MLS. I think they've added strength and depth everywhere, apart from maybe right back. I think it's the, one of the best teams for depth. So that could help us in the amount of games that's going to be played. Interesting. Orlando fans, let us know. Do you agree with Elliot uh, on what he's just said there at MLS UK show? Uh, right, I'll talk about Atlanta then. Sorry, by the way. I should have updated the screen behind you. Yeah, yeah. Seeing Miggy and... Miggy's Joseph. fine because Miggy's gone to Newcastle. He's yeah. furthered his career. Joseph. Poor old, poor old Joseph. Yeah, he's, uh, I mean, he's he's living in slightly no, it's yeah, slightly warmer climates now. Slightly mm. maybe. Um, it's all gone south, literally. No, it's a big year for Atlanta. It's a, it's a season of change. There's no doubt about that. Of course, they've brought in a new CEO from Seattle, which I think is a, a massive move mm. considering how well Seattle have done. Um, you know, the likes of Joseph Martinez have left and uh, really that sort of legacy from the early days of um, of MLS for Atlanta are now pretty much gone. So it's about the new era of MLS, where are Atlanta going next. They've got the fan base, they've got this massive stadium. It's about time. After... They, they use a massive stadium. Yeah, well, but the, uh, it's about time that they now take it on and, and go in this new direction. Atlanta will always be exciting football. Yeah, yeah. And when you've got like uh, Thiago M. Almeida in there, who shout out was in, you know, part of a World Cup winning team. First MLS player to do that. Uh, of course, Luis Arujo as well. Uh, and uh, Gio Kamakis, I think I've said that right, yeah. coming in from Celtic. One of my mates is a big Celtic fan and he d- DM'd me uh, saying, you've got a good player there. He, I think he, he wanted him to stay at Celtic, but he just wasn't getting any opportunities. So I'm excited to see how he does. So it, it could be a really exciting season for Atlanta. Do I think they'll challenge MLS Cup? No, I don't. I think making playoffs and trying to do well in the cup competitions will be a good start. And I think, um, you know, despite all this change, I think the the one man who has been consistent over the last, you know, 18 months now, Pineda, 
it's a massive season for him because if, if they don't start well, I think the pressure will really be on him. I agree. I think it's been too many years of, uh, you know, Orlando suffered early on. Atlanta had huge success early on and are now, you know, have been in a dip. Uh, and the fans are the fans are expectant. Yeah. Uh, Miles Robinson, Brad Guzan, Ozzy Alonso, all coming back from long-term injuries as mm. well. So um, it's, we, it's an interesting one goal because we've said with Brad Guzan, who is like, honestly, I thought he was going to retire. I presume that would be it. Yeah, but he's he looks like he's coming back. But um, this is something as well that we, that we should have touched on. Sorry to jump in. I do think one of the again taking the Orlando shirt cap off. One of the key bits of business in keeping players is Pedro Calese. Mm. Easily one of the best keepers in the league, and had offers, big offers elsewhere. We're led to believe, and Orlando have managed to hold on to him. Atlanta have still got Brad Guzan. For me, that's not on the same. That's not on the same level. No, I would like to see a change in goal. Yeah. I've got to admit. I mean, Guzan pulls off some great saves, but I think it just needs a change. Um, but so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how Atlanta do. I think in terms of, I know I said there the pressure will be on Pineda, and I think it is. But I think the fan base isn't as expectant as recent yeah. years. You know, Martinez has gone, and okay, he didn't really play that many games, not compared to what he did a few years ago. But he is still, he was a fan favourite and now it's its time for everyone to move on from that. And I think in the players they've brought in, you know, like Etienne Jr. as well from Columbus, uh, they've managed to keep hold as well off, um, of uh, Karango Parata. He's, yeah. he's a staying alone. And uh, I mean, we all remember that hat-trick v Toronto <laughs> last year. So uh, I think he's, he's impressed me. So they've got some good players in there. I think it's all about gelling it together and... I don't really know what to predict from Atlanta this year. I would like us to get in the playoffs, but then it wouldn't surprise me if I had another season finishing 11th. You didn't want to keep Dom Dwyer? Uh, no. That's funny, because when he moved to Atlanta, do we all remember how he's going to be the, the, the huge success? Hey, he's he's found, his, found his level. He's got a few goals. He did okay. Okay. So stepping away from our teams then, uh, the rest of the East, who do you think are challenging? Because Philadelphia have been there. I mean, they couldn't have done much better last year apart from score penalties in the final. No, it's Philadelphia for me. It's so easy to say that, isn't it? Um, it's easy to say Philadelphia because they, they came so close last year. Um, I think Perea um, joining from from Orlando is a, is a really good signing in, in their midfield. Um, they've got Torres as well, playing that number 10, maybe as a second striker as well. Um, Damien Lowe as well, um, because uh, that was a, a trade from, from into Miami. Uh, made 28 starts for Miami last year. I, I think I think he immediately looks better in a, you know, in a Philadelphia team that's going to be really well structured, really well organized. I think that suits him. So uh, they've got stronger. You know, Philly have got stronger. The conversation... Conversations there to be had. Can they go that extra step? I think they're certainly more on a level with LAFC now. Um, but I'm just going to say it. And I, I never, ever, ever thought I'd see the day. For me, one of the forces to be reckoned with in the East this season is FC Cincinnati. Yeah. Clip it off. Let's listen to it back at the end of the season. FC Cincinnati are looking good. Well, they've got the momentum from last year. Mm -hmm. They did well in the playoffs and they're front three. <sighs> That's a good one. I think that, that rivals quite a few teams. Vazquez, Brenner, Acosta. Yeah, there's not many better in MLS. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a big year for them to, to progress. I mean, it will be a massive anticlimax if you don't do well, if you drop down the league. But I just don't see it happening. I'm with you. I think they'll have a really good season. Going forward, they're going to be so exciting. And um, yeah, I, I think they could challenge the top of the, you know, the top of the East. I think Philly, yeah, are going to be there or thereabouts, of course. You then look at, I think, the two New York teams. I don't, I'm not sure that no. they'll finish at the top. They've got, New York City got business they need to do quickly. Yeah. So I think they, New York City FC, I think, will make the playoffs, but I don't think they'll be anywhere near the top end of it. Um, let me ask you about Columbus Crew, because they've got a new manager in. They've got Wilfred Nancy from uh, Montreal. Mm -hmm. Now, is he, do you, because he really suited Montreal for me. 
Is he going to suit Columbus? Because it's a different mentality there. Those fans are expectant. They want success. It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because I think we all know he likes to play really, really lovely football. And Columbus crew clearly believe that he is the perfect fit for their roster. They went out of their way to go and get Wilfred Nancy. I, I, I think it's a really, really interesting move. There was no way when you look at how aggressive they were in, in bringing him in, there's no way they didn't believe that he was the right man for the job. There's talent in the team, you know, Ramirez, uh, Cucho, uh, of course, Zella Ryan. You know, they've acquired Madranda as well. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of excited by it and kind of think it could be a bit of a car crash at the start hmm. when he's trying to show them how he wants to play. Um, Ramirez, you know, coming in, obviously played for, for Houston Dynamo before Christian Ramirez, I'm talking about, um, is a really interesting signing for me. I think Cucho is, Cucho is bang on it, by the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. last year, really, really strong. So yeah, let's see, um, let's see how we get on with, uh, with Wilfred in charge at Columbus. I, I really want it to work. I'm just skeptical. I'd agree. Uh, right, let's. Uh, the last team I want to talk about Toronto. Um, I've brought in Sean Johnson. Big that. And they've also obviously got the two Italian DPs from the end of last season. What is a good season for Toronto? It's got to work for me. Toronto, it's time. It's time to get going. You know, you've got aging players. They're one of the oldest squads in the MLS, and Bob's got it all together, and he's got all of these all of these aging players. On the pitch at the same time, it, it, if it doesn't work now, it's not going to work next year because half of them are going to end up going. So it's now or never. Unfortunately, you, that's the pressure he's put on himself by by signing aging aging players. That's not the direction of the league anymore. I'm not saying it won't work. I'm saying it has to work. Yeah, um, I think the uh, you know when you consider that they conceded the third most goals in the league last year, I think Sean mm. Johnson is a good signing. Yeah. But then, yeah, you've got to look at the likes of Insignia, Bernadeschi. It's a big year. It's a big year for Toronto because, again, I know they didn't start MLS that well, but in recent years, in the last six years, while we've been watching it, they have been successful. And their fan base are not used to seeing them now finishing 13th in the East. So we give them the benefit of a doubt last year. We said a lot of changes are going to be made in the summer, so it was a big second half of the year. We didn't actually think they'd make the playoffs. This year... I think we definitely need to make the playoffs, but we need to be challenging. We need to be challenging the top end of the league. It's Bob and his friends. You know, he's he's, he's got his son still playing uh, in centre midfield. Um, he's brought back Diamande, uh, who he's worked with previously. I, I, it's just the pressure's on for me. Mate, it's got to make it work. So there you go. That's our Eastern Conference preview for 2023. Let us know what you think. Tweet us at MLS UK Show. Um, you can also Instagram us, TikTok us, or email us hello at MLS.show. Now it's time to hear from Poppy and what she thinks of the Eastern Conference jerseys for this year. Starting off with my team, Atlanta United. It's their home shirt, red and black stripes. But what does she think? Henry, can you not support somebody with a better shirt? That's awful. I don't like vertical stripes down the middle. It's stupid. It's awful. There's not a single thing I like about it. Sorry. Yes, Poppy. Unbelievable. Love it. Uh, right, let's move on to Charlotte then. This is their away jersey. Now, we asked on Twitter who uh, people thought Poppy would have as a favourite kit. And quite a few people said Charlotte because it's a mixture of purple and pink. Uh, I think it's very nice. But does Poppy agree? It's got everything in there that I should like it. Pink's my favourite colour. Really like purple. But all together, it's just an awful mess. An awful mess. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite surprised with that one. Now, this next one, and I teased it before, this is my favourite shirt. Really? Chicago Fire. I saw this and went, that's nice. That was the one where I saw and went, I like, really like that. But we'll pop Really? Yeah, but we'll poppy agree. I love this. This is like 3D glasses. It's amazing. She does. And I can see what she means with the 3D glasses. Why are they the team that has it in the middle? I don't I don't get the Yeah, I was yeah, I thought that. Why like, are they getting their own template? Yeah. But it's a good template. I like it. Do you if, not have, do you not a fan? If Orlando would have released that, I'd have been fuming. Really? Yeah. Oh no, I really like it. I like the the blue and red with it as well. Uh, very good. 
Top marks from me for Chicago. Um, right, FC Cincinnati. And uh, this is uh, their home shirt. So it's sort of a the sort of royal blue, sort of Chelsea yeah. blue. Uh, with kind of like a water, as if water's being chucked in the background of it. It looks like the commercial at the cinema where they're pouring the Coke. Or like um, a, a face wash advert where they're splashing the water. It's very interesting. Um, not my favourite shirt, but I don't mind it. Columbus Crew, these are Poppy's favourite team, the Buzzy Bees. The Buzzy Bees are releasing their away jersey this year, so it's black uh, with patterns in the background. Does she like it? Wow, love it. Love the, the like little diamonds, triangles, Come and the zigzagging lines. Love that. Come on. What does it remind me of? Kind of looks like a piano. <laughs> Come off it. It kind of looks like a piano. She's obsessed with the Buzzy Bees. It's not a good shirt. This could have been the shirt from before. Uh, you know the one from like the 2020, the 25th anniversary. Yes, it could. Yeah. It's like the same shirt. It is. It is the same time. I think Columbus do do that. The, the kits are very similar, but Poppy likes them. So who who are we to judge? <sighs> Moving on now to uh, DC United. Surely she loves this. This was uh, along with the um, uh, the Charlotte shirt. This was the next one where people thought she would love this. It's the cherry blossom shirt. A cherry blossom shirt. Wow, I love that. It looks like a jigsaw puzzle. I knew she'd love it. Yeah, and it looks like a jigsaw puzzle. I can I can sort of see, see where she's coming from with the jigsaw puzzle with the, uh, the print on the background, but no, it is a cherry blossom tree. <laughs> uh, maybe it's a jigsaw of a tree. Who knows? Um, right, let's move on now to into Miami. Black with a bit of pink on it. You know what you're getting from into Miami? To me, it looks like the stripes have got a raised pattern on it, like almost like foam. My my nan used to have a wallpaper that had foam shapes printed into it that you could stick your nail into it, and that's what it looks like to me. So, uh, yeah, it's not for me. I'd like to stick some nails into it as well. <laughs> Do you know what she means, though, with yeah, that wallpaper? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's funny how she used And to... the Artex ceiling as well. Yeah. Similar. Yeah. Um, so there, into Miami taking... Don't know why I did this. Like, <laughs> you, you, we know what an Artex ceiling is. <laughs> taking reference from a... Uh, from possibly David Beckham's grand's wallpaper. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, right, now it's time for Montreal. So a, a quick... Oh, getting nervous, getting towards the big one. <laughs> a quick note on this one. As we recorded this... This shirt hasn't been released yet, but as we've seen with every other shirt, it has been leaked. So we're going off the leaked version of it. Mm-hmm. If if this is not how it is, then I'll I be will amazed. be shocked. Yeah. But Pop, you could end up seeing it and Poppy describing something different. But it's the home shirt. So it's red and black. Uh, sorry, it's blue and black stripes. I don't think it's going to be anything different from what we saw. I feel like I'm going to sound like a hypocrite with this one because I feel like the things that it's got in there, I've complimented in other shirts, but... I actually really don't like this. I don't know whether it's because they're vertical stripes or I don't particularly like that colour blue. It's interesting, but it's still a little bit disappointing to me. It's it's not a shirt for me. But she didn't mind San Jose. (sighs) She just contradicts herself. (laughs) Right, let's move on to Nashville. So this is, uh, it's a black kit. Everything on it is black. You've got the badge is black. The sponsor is black. Johnny Cash shirt. He's a Johnny Cash shirt. I actually, my uh, five-a-side team play in black, so I'm thinking I might buy it for that because it's just black. Mm. And I do, I don't mind it. But uh, uh, will Poppy like for lack of colour in it? You know what? It's plain and it's simple, which is something that I don't normally enjoy. But that shirt's telling me I've come here to win. It's a winning shirt. It's a winning shirt. That's why I might get it from a -a five-a-side team. Because we need all the help. Probably a bit of a misfit. (laughs) Yeah, true. Uh, Right, now we're getting closer to Orlando. But first, it's New England Revolution. This is a white shirt with a a red kind of going vertically down the uh, Mm. the middle. I love it. The ombre effect, the little dots. You know what? I can't fault it. I really, really like that. And I like that it's in like a swooping effect. Okay. New York Red Bulls. Now, this has been a bit of a controversial one. Some people, I think, were saying it's a bit, I don't know, looks like... Where do you think I stand on this? I don't think you'll like it. I don't like it. No. Um, how would you... Look, I'm going to just have a quick look it at it. It looks dirty. Yeah, I think that's the where it's come from, is that it, it looks dirty. Um, yeah, it's a bit yellowy. It's uh, it, it's meant to be going back to sort of a Thierry Henry days. It looks like a pillowcase that needs to be washed. It does. That's that's exactly what I thought. But does, what does Poppy think? It's awful. You know what? The design is gone. 
oh, you know what? I'm just going to have a lie down so I can think about what the shirt is. Looked up at the sky, seen some clouds, taken a picture. There you go. There's your shirt. It's a dirty clouds. Dirty clouds. Uh, right, let's go to New York City FC. There's his, uh, your blue home shirt, but it's kind of uh, the NYCFC badge, but in like a mosaic in the background. It looks like the bottom of a pool. Again, the designer couldn't think of what to do. Went for a swim. There you go. There's your shirt. Orlando City. Come on, Poppy. Come on. It's beautiful. It's purple. It's got gold trim. It's stunning. I love it so much. It's got a, a wall print in the background. Love it. Here's what Poppy thought. I think we're coming up with a theme here. The designer was just like, oh my goodness, I cannot think of a single thing to put on this shirt. It's gone out for a walk, seen a brick wall. There you go. <laughs> Inspired by a brick wall. No mention of the colour, no. no mention of the the purple, which she loved before, no yeah. mention of the gold, which yeah. really sets it off. It's gold like the MLS Cup that we're going <sighs> to... No, brick well. You carry on, messaging you carry on. Uh, right, now it's time for Philadelphia Union. Uh, this one is kind of a, a clouds effect, and I know this has been said on social media, but the clouds on it reminded Poppy of the start of a certain TV show. If the Simpsons played soccer, there you go. It made me laugh that I heard uh, that people were saying that. And uh, it's just true. It looks like exactly like that. The start of the Simpsons. So Philadelphia fans. I don't like this shirt, I've got to admit. Just messaging your wife, hold on. Uh, I'll talk amongst myself. And yeah, not a fan of it. Philadelphia fans, um, sorry, but I'm not a fan of it. I don't know whether Poppy is actually a fan of it. She just noticed the Simpsons link and that was it. I've said it's per all capitals. It's purple, exclamation mark, send. And gold, exclamation mark, send. It's beautiful, exclamation mark, send. And then the huffing, uh, what I would describe as the Atlanta emoji. <laughs> yeah. But it's a brick wall. Uh, right, let's move on now from Philadelphia and let's go to... Toronto! Toronto. Now, this is a bit of a change, isn't it? Their home shirt. Mm. Instead of the red, they've got red as on the sleeves. I presumed it was the away shirt. Me too, but no, it's not. It's the home one. And uh, in the background, well, the foreground of the shirt, in the middle of it, it's sort of grey and black or light grey uh, vertical. Hor hor no, horizontal. You see, I don't do kit reviews. <laughs> horizontal lines. Oh, Poppy was bad. Here we go. <laughs> the red is too bright a red on the sleeves to go with that like dull grey, silver. Uh, maybe it's just one stripe too many. She said that as a bit of a... Uh, I just... I don't know what uh, to Who knows? It's, so la it's the last one. Just let me go. <laughs> <laughs> she was home. <laughs> Uh, right, uh, rounding up the we uh, the East End, who, who do you think was... I mean, I'm going to go with Chicago. That's my favourite. Who do you think Poppy chose? Oh, it's got to be Orlando. Surely she'll give us more. She'll say, oh, I forgot to mention that I really like the purple and I love the gold. The colours really work together. That's what she's going to say. Other than Orlando, what, well, what's your favourite one? Um, I can see what... I, I understand why Chicago is a Marmite one. I understand why you would like it. For me, it's quite Bolton. I think that's why you like it. <laughs> Um. Uh, ge genuinely, I'm not just saying it. Orla I'm just looking back at some of the names. Orlando's is my favourite, honestly. Wow. Um, Atlantis is just the same as the first ever one. Yeah. Um, Charlotte's. Yeah, Charlotte's is good. D the DC fans have wanted the cherry blossom for ages, so I'm happy that they've got that. Uh, let's see what Poppy thinks. I've been so shocked with how good the shirts are this year. Well done, Adidas. You're quite clearly listening to my kit reviews because <laughs> I'm just so surprised I like so many. Again, I've got a top three for the Eastern side. My number one is Chicago Away. I love it. Again, it looks like 3D glasses. I think it's ace. Second is DC United Away. I love that it's like a cherry blossom, little jigsaw. I love the colours of it. I think it's great. And obviously, I can't let my team down. Number three is Columbus. No. I wish you were number one. Right, but no, come on. You know what? It's a great shirt. Keep making great shirts. It's the worst one. It's not the worst one. There's worse. I'm not paying her for this. We're not paying her at all. Oh, okay. Fine. Uh, Orlando must have been fourth, mate. I will ask, but... Well, she's not got back to me. <laughs> she's left me on red. 
Uh, right then, so <laughs> she does that to me a lot. I should stop mentioning other people's wives, I think. <laughs> um, right, so there's the kit reviews. Thank you, Poppy, um, and uh, we hope that you all enjoyed that. We hope that your team's kit was praised from her. Uh, but on the whole, I think that this year, uh, Adidas have done really well. I think the kits are, are brilliant. And maybe that Apple TV have had a word with them and said, come on, make some nice kits. And they have done so. So uh, we await to see what they do next year when Poppy will return. Um, right, now we're going to do our weekend predictions in a moment. But first of all, let's just have a, a couple of minutes on what we think is going to happen this season. Uh, we've broke it down into three categories. Um, let's go with MLS Cup. Who do you think is going to win MLS Cup? I think it's really it's so boring. It was really hard to say anything other than LAFC or, or Philadelphia. If you want outside runners, um, I think Philly could go deep. I think Orlando should go deep. And uh, Vancouver to make the playoffs. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm. I don't. I was gonna play LAFC just to be safe. I might just go. I might go Austin just for something different. Okay. Austin. It'll be a difficult start to the season, which I'm not choosing them to win supporters' shield. But I think Austin to win MLS Cup. I I, I can vis, you know I can see that it could be a really nice if Austin get to MLS Cup and host it. It'll be a great event, and uh, I can see that happening. Um, yeah, LAFC over that. Philadelphia. It's a big season for Philadelphia. They've done nothing wrong in my eyes really in the last two years. Just just missed out. If you think the, the two years ago. Half the play, half the team had COVID. The last year they lost on penalties. They've not done really anything wrong. Can they can be consistent? Can they get that what last push and get MLS Cup? We'll have to see. Uh, but I'll go Austin. Um, what about supporter shield then? Supporter shield. I mean, if I had to pick, I'm going to say Philly. I thought you were going to go with who I'm. They gonna didn't. Go for. They didn't lose. A game at home all season, mm. um, and they only drew thirty percent of their games at home. So they won seventy percent. If you're doing that, you are you are up there. And I think, I think they, you know, every year they just get a little bit better. I'm gonna go for Sporty Shield, and I was thinking about this, and I was thinking I'm gonna go for a team that aren't in the Champions League, so they can have a, a whole good season, and. Some people may laugh at this. Some people may go, oh, no, I agree with that. I'm going to go for FC Cincinnati. No, that's fair. I think they could do it. I think they could just pull out a great seat. If everyone stays fit, if they're attacking, they could score the most goals in the league. And for me to say that based on where they were two seasons ago is unbelievable. Pat Noonan. Yeah. He's done an amazing job, and I think he continue. So, uh, right, MVP. MLS MVP 2023 is going to be a player that's not currently here now. He's not on a roster. Okay. They're going to play three, four, five months, and they're going to win the award. Is that player going to be playing for Inter Miami? Yes. Right, okay. Leo Messi. Uh, That is a very good shout. Tell me I'm wrong. No, it's a very good shout. For me, out of the players that are here already, I've got to stick with Cin- <laughs> yawn. I've got to stick. Plays with- it so safe. <laughs> got to stick with Cincinnati. Uh, Brendan Vasquez could do it. Okay, I think. But I've got a funny feeling. I really liked the way that uh, Cucho Hernandez ended last season. He was incredible, and I think he could if he continues that. He'll be a big shout for uh, MVP. Stats for Cucho are really good. Mm. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. Who do you think? Let us know who will be MVP, who will win the Supporters Shield and who will win MLS Cup. Uh, well, it all starts this weekend. Um, now, we used to say, go through the matches and say, oh, this is on Sky Sports in the UK. We don't really do that anymore because it's all on Apple TV. Mm. A massive shout out for the guys behind what happened, you know, what was the the what Sky Sports did because, okay, it wasn't, amazing in terms of the actual quality of what we were seeing commentators phil blacker was brilliant so Mm -hmm. shout out to him but in you know it was we were given what we were given it was what mls gives sky sports but it was something that allowed us to watch mls so a big shout out to them uh right weekend predictions it all starts off nashville versus nycfc elliot what's your prediction uh oh nashville are just sort of okay um 
You go first. Uh, I'm going to go for a 1-0 win, Nashville. Mm, I'm going to go 1-1. Okay, Cincinnati versus Houston Dynamo. Uh, Cincinnati were tipping to have a big big yeah. season, so uh, I'm going to go 2-0 Cincinnati. Uh, I'll go 3-0. Uh, Philadelphia Union versus Columbus. Big game, this. It is a big game. Um, 2-1 Philly. Philadelphia can go 23 games unbeaten mm. at home if they uh, win or draw. I think it'd be a draw. I think 1-1. Okay, big call. DC versus Toronto. DC were poor last mm. year. Um, we'll talk more about DC in the next few episodes, actually. Terrible home win rate. Uh, won like 23% of their home games. Yeah. Um, who are they playing? Toronto. Toronto, also terrible. Um, <laughs> uh, no, but Toronto Toronto have improved. I- I'll go for a draw one all. 2-1 uh, Toronto. Uh, Orlando versus New York Red Bulls. Mm, terrible home form for Orlando last year. Um, have improved massively, so I have to back them 2-1 Orlando. Yeah, I'll go for the same, 2-1 Orlando. Uh, Atlanta v San Jose. Atlanta win that 2-0. Uh, 3-1 Atlanta. Charlotte versus New England Revolution. Charlotte, Charlotte lose that, 2-1 New England. Oh, Charlotte's home farm was very good last year. 58% win record. Uh, but I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say they'll win again. I think two now. Okay. Uh, Into Miami versus Montreal. Mm, quite high. I'm quite high on Montreal. Mm, I think it's a tough one to 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 sort of. Into Miami's home form is really good. Um, a lot of changes though at Miami. I feel Miami are just waiting for Messi to come. Two nil Miami. Um, I'm going to go two nil Montreal. Uh, Dallas versus Minnesota. Dallas, another team I really want to talk about in the next few weeks. Actually, yeah, I'm not. I'm not big on them this season, if I'm honest. Um, they are at home though. Uh, one all, three two Dallas. Uh, Austin versus St Louis. Austin for St Louis. City FC uh, nil. Yeah, um, I'll go for a three three nil. I think Austin. They're comfortable, like, yeah. I mean, Austin about it. They, you know, they've had that first game where they, you know, it's tough. But, yeah. Uh, LA Galaxy versus LAFC, Rose Bowl. This is going to be an incredible game to watch. Goals, goals, goals for me. Um, 4-3 LAFC. Yeah, I think there'll be loads of goals in this. Um, I'm going to go 3-2 LA Galaxy, actually. Ooh, okay. Uh, Vancouver v RSL. Um, both these I'm quite big on this year. Um, Vancouver at home. I, f- I fancy Vancouver at home to get the job done. Two 0 Um, shout out by the way. I mentioned my mate John and Amy. They live in Vancouver. Who mm-hmm. Ryan Gold dropped? Uh, oh yeah, something off at the house. They got engaged the other day. Oh, well, congratulations to them. Was it was the ring silver or gold? <laughs> Um, she did post a picture of it, but as as a as a man, I didn't really. No, Poppy looked at it. Poppy really liked it, but I was like, "Oh, look at that! That's nice." Silver or Ryan? Let us know. <laughs> uh, Vancouver will win for John and Amy two one. Nice. And um, Portland versus SKC. Ah, uh, terrible year for both last season. Um, Portland, Portland three one. I'm going to go for a draw, uh, 2-2. And finally, Seattle versus Colorado. Seattle 2, Colorado 0. Um, yeah, Seattle will win, 3-0. Uh, so there we go. Uh, there's our first set of predictions for this season. Um, and uh, before we round off and before we finish, we now need to find out who the first ever name, uh, the Anton Walks Memorial uh, Game with a Changing Name is. Now, this player uh, was born in Norway and they played for four Norwegian teams who I can't pronounce uh, before they went to Minsk in Belarus. Uh, they then played uh, for Hull, LAFC. They played in China. They played in Qatar. And now they are back in MLS at Toronto FC. They got mentioned in the podcast and their name is... Diamande. Correct. Yes. Uh, Pulled it out the back. When we had the break, I went... Actually, I might know that. I <laughs> uh, got it right. Well done if you got it right as well. Um, commiserations if you didn't. We'll be doing another one in two weeks when uh, we return for another full episode of the MLS UK show. Next week, we will be back for a stoppage time episode. We are well aware that friend of the show, Ian Joy, 
has started doing some stoppage time episodes of his own. Um, so we see you, Ian. We're not affiliated with Ian Joy. <laughs> but uh, but no, we uh, we will be back next week. So that's our bonus episode, for those who don't know, where we talk about the biggest news of MLS from that week. Um, so that's episode one of this season done. Elliot, episode one, two, three uh, overall. <laughs> um, Easy and, as ABC, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and if you've enjoyed it, please uh, let us know by leaving a rating on your podcast provider. Uh, but there's one rule and one rule only, Elliot. LA Galaxy style, and they're still the only team to do it. Five stars only. Yes, we've all seen uh, the uh, little documentaries made, Landon Donovan's last game, when they got that. So uh, on Apple TV. Um, enjoy Apple TV. We can't wait to watch it. Enjoy MLS for 2023. MLS is back, baby. Yes, we will be back throughout the season. We may have a break around July time when Elliot's a bit preoccupied, uh, but that's when the League's Cup is, so it might work out quite well. Um <laughs> Oh, doesn't it look so good? So good. Better than the actual shirt that we're wearing this season. (laughs) Uh, Right, I've been Henry Hewitt. I've been Elliot Holman. See ya.